And tonight we're going to get right to our top story, a stunning and shocking turn of events in the Hunter Biden saga tonight. Early this morning, a federal judge refused to act as a rubber stamp for Biden's weaponized Department of Justice and put the brakes on Hunter's sweetheart plea deal, at least for now. Now, the U.S. District Judge, Mary Ellen Noreka is her name, questioned the legality of the plea agreement and wanted to know if, if Hunter was under an active investigation for other crimes like FARA violations and other financial issues, which really he was in trouble until they let the statute of limitations run out. As it turns out, according to prosecutors, Hunter remains the subject of at least one ongoing criminal probe and could be charged with future crimes. Now, apparently, Hunter's attorneys were under the impression that this deal would grant their client full immunity from any future charges. They believed that their sweetheart deal, slap on the wrist deal, consisting of two minor misdemeanor tax violations and the deferred gun charge would wipe his slate clean. By the way, when the judge asked the prosecution and the defense, do you have any precedence for this type of deal on the, on the gun issue? Uh, they couldn't cite a single case. Now, why do I have a hard time believing this very important, critical point that they came to agreement on was not fully vetted and agreed to before today's court appearance. Why does something here reek of a major lie? Uh, there's nobody that's going to convince me they didn't have a full agreement. They were not going to give any more future charges to Hunter Biden. And I think it was this judge that saw right through it and called them out on it. Uh, then the judge allowed them to try and hammer out a final last-minute deal, but without that provision, there was no way Hunter's attorneys were going to allow him to do that. The judge refused to accept the agreement. Hunter pleaded not guilty to the tax and gun charges. And if found guilty, now Hunter could face real time behind bars like the rest of America. Unless, of course, another sweetheart deal is reached. Now, keep in mind, according to the Washington Examiner, this is the same judge that sentenced another individual to five years in prison for an illegal possession of a firearm in the furtherance of a drug crime. In the meantime, the judge ordered Hunter Biden to actively seek employment and barred him from possessing a firearm, prohibiting from using alcohol or any illegal drugs, and required him to submit to random drug testing. And, uh, oh, yeah, according to federal prosecutors, Hunter could also be charged in the future with a variety of other crimes, including not registering as a foreign agent, as Farrah requires. Uh, so are we to believe that Hunter's attorneys, they didn't know about all this until today, or did they have an understanding with a weaponized and politicized Merrick Garland Department of Justice that if you take this sweetheart deal, no more charges will be forthcoming? This does not meet the smell test to me. Now, this all comes one day after Judge uh, Nareka accused a member of Hunter Biden's legal team, this was an odd turn of events late last night, of pre pretending to be a staffer for Republican Congressman Jason Smith on the House Ways and Means Committee on a phone call to try and get a court filing that was put in the case by the Ways and Means Committee, an amicus brief, removed from the docket. Now, Congressman Smith, who serves on that committee as chairman, previously submitted this filing asking the judge to consider new evidence against Hunter from the two whistleblowers who recently testified very credibly on Capitol Hill. Now, Chairman Smith, Chairman Comer, Chairman Jordan will all join us in a minute. Uh, but, of course, the Biden legal team says this is all big one, one big misunderstanding. Really? On such an important deal point? We're to believe that. I don't believe it. Just like misunderstanding surrounding Hunter's sale of uh, his art, his paint-by-numbers. Remember, the White House had promised that Hunter's paint-by-numbers portraits of a crackhead <laughs> would not be connected to the administration in any way. They vowed that no one, not Hunter, not the White House, not anyone would know who shelled out the massive amount? You're cracking me up, ma'am. The massive amounts of money for this amateur art. As it turns out, we now know the identities of two of the buyers, including a wealthy Democratic donor who President Biden, oh, magically uh, recently appointed to a prestigious position in the administration. 
Another Biden, another buyer was uh, Hunter's so-called sugar brother, Kevin Morris, uh, who helped Hunter pay off some of his back taxes and even bought Hunter a brand new car. And evidently, you know, one can get special access to the Bidens if the price is right. Just make sure to check out, you know, to Hunter and check in with him that the big guy likes to keep up with appearances. So the big question tonight is what will happen to Hunter, but more importantly, what will happen to Joe Biden as a result of everything we're learning and everything we know? After everything we learned from the IRS whistleblowers, including the government's obstruction of witnesses, the lack of interest and censorship of Hunter's laptop, the DOJ's stall tactics that allowed the statute of limitations to expire on serious tax charges, lot, large amounts of money, and how the FBI, of course, tipped off Hunter about the IRS's, quote, planned surprise questioning of him. Uh, how can anyone involved be trusted by anybody in the American public?